that much. If your 11-year-old self could see you now and what you have and what you've achieved, what would you think? I think I'd be pretty amazed. I grew up very poor, but I had great mentors. My grandmother was wonderful to me and she always believed in me. And my mom was a kind of a bohemian songwriter and she always thought a big hit was just right around the corner to get us uh, out of poverty. So eventually it happened, not quite as fast as she thought. Well, that seems, I have a, my next question is perfect for that. Um, living on a prayer seems a lot like having money struggles, but with love getting you through it. Is that related to your childhood? Yes, I, I thought a lot about the people who supported me when I was growing up. And having somebody that loves you is so important. And in the end, it's the love that you have in your life that's the real value of living, not how much money you have. Okay, so going back to how you're raised, does your Cuban, it's not Cuban, Oh wait, yeah, sorry. Culture impact any of your um, non-Latin music? I would think that some of the Cuban culture uh, that I grew up listening, uh, you know, being a part of and listening to, the, to Cuban music did influence my songwriting. Because there's something that's very fluid about Cuban music, and I think that my songs have a kind of flow in them. So, okay. You collaborate a lot, so um, is there someone that you feel you do your absolute best work with that you are always kind of guaranteed to have a good outcome with? My favorite collaborator, well let's say plural collaborators, are John Bon Jovi and Richie Sambora Bon Jovi. We've written, I think, one of the best songs of the, of the last 25 years, Living on a Prayer. Definitely. And a bunch of other songs. The one great thing about Living on a Prayer is that you can go to a concert today and when they go to do the song, they don't even have to do it. The whole audience is singing along, young and old. So it seems to have struck a chord amongst fans all around the world. Seeing fans react that way, do you, does it really like melt your heart, melt warm your heart? Well, <laughs> it does. Uh, a lot of the time that I spend at a Bon Jovi concert is not really looking at the stage, but turning around and looking at the audience, at the audiences, and it, and it does warm my heart. Um, we've gotten letters through the years of people that were going to jump off a bridge and they parked the car and got ready to jump and living on a prayer came on the radio and they just went back in their car and drove home and dealt with their problems. So that's a really good feeling. That is actually amazing. I didn't, if I'd known that, that you are going to say that, I probably would have rewritten the next question. Um, even when you work with other people, I assume that you kind of incorporate your own style. So you were saying before you kind of have that Cuban flow in all your music, but what else, if you had your own genre, what would you describe your music as? I guess the genre that I'm most comfortable in is the genre of confessional storytelling kind of songs and um, it, they can be more, I guess, in the rock vein than in the R&B vein. But I think there's, there's kind of a flow. Have you ever had to change that for what's in quotation marks in? Usually the songwriting part isn't what changes. What changes is the instrumentation. Because right now we're going through what I call a disco phase. Everything sounds like it's going to be played in a disco. 
from Lady Gaga to Katy Perry. And it sounds really good, but I've seen that disco phase come and go over the last 35 years. So, you know, probably after that, there'll be a big rock and roll phase and people won't want to have anything to do with dance music. So we'll see. I have one last question, mostly for myself. Um, I have recently started writing songs on my guitar, and when I like get the chords down first, and I have written the lyrics also, getting them to match up and getting the lyrics to really be in harmony with the guitar can be a little bit hard. Do you have any suggestions? I think the first thing to focus on is what you're saying in the song. If you have a title, that's always a good place to start because then everything you write sets up the title, sets up what we call the hook. And the music is really secondary because you could make it all with orchestra, orchestral instruments or you can make it with electronic music or you can make it with rock and roll. The same song can be performed in many ways. I once went on, on YouTube and, and um, iTunes and I started listening to all the different versions there are of Living on a Prayer. And it's really, really funny because it's performed in many languages as well. And, or and even people thinking they're singing in English and it's sounding like another language. <laughs> it's really kind of funny. And sometimes it sounds like lounge music or sometimes it sounds like really heavy metal. So one song can be performed in so many different styles. Thank you. You're welcome. It's been a really great interview and I just want to let you know that um, we have to make a little bit of a blog about the whole entire project and I was writing like most of the things that my classmates would have known that you've done and I had a bunch of little comments next to it. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe you know this fantastic person. I love all of these songs and all of these people. Oh my gosh. Thank you. You're very welcome and good luck with your songwriting. Thank you.